Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Dhamma meeting where we will discuss the Buddhist practices of charity, morality, and meditation. Everyone who is interested is welcome to join. And our first Participant is Jordan from Bangkok. Good evening, Jordan. How are you? Good evening, Tanajan. I'm doing well, thank you. How are you this evening? Good, good. Thank you. Um, I had one question uh, around uh, a certain uh, um, technique for mindfulness. Uh, some people use uh, kind of Prayer, prayer beads and uh, and count each one uh, with with their mantra and uh, I I, uh, I do that sometimes and I I imagine it's uh, it's not um, the mind wouldn't be able to get fully still because the body is still still moving but uh, if our mind is particularly uh, active is it's a it's okay to to use them to to calm the mind and then maybe move to to just the mantra after? Yes, eventually you want to go to the mantra or to the breath. Okay. But uh, when you start, if your mind is restless, it's still agitated, you can use whatever thing that you, you feel good for you, useful for you. Some people do some chanting, some people listening to Dhamma talk mm. to help calm their mind first, to get more concentration. And when they feel that their mind's calm enough to watch, watch the breath, then they'll start, they'll, they'll switch to watching the breath instead. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yes, but eventually you need to just focus on one object, concentrate on one object, and not thinking. The important thing is not to think while you focus on your breath or on your mantra or, or counting the, or the beads. You mm -hmm. Make sure that you, the goal is to stop thinking. Because if you can all stop thinking, your mind will never be still, will never have jhana, will never have equanimity. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. That that uh, it's very clear to me. Um, another well, thing is, yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, I just wanted to uh, uh, to share something that uh, in my walking meditation practice, I I, uh, I sometimes I stop at the end of the walking meditation path uh, just to kind of re renew reset my intention. To, so that each time I get to the end, I, I try to, you know, that that full fifty feet, I want to to uh, avoid thinking and just stay with the the mantra. And uh, but then I notice that sometimes that when I when I stop at the end, there's a there's an intention to stay stay still for a, a, you know a few seconds or something. And then, but that requires thinking to get myself to uh, uh, to decide to stay still. And uh, and so I've I've just start, I started to uh, to instead just turn around and, and immediately start walking back and then the same at the other end and and I found that uh, uh, there wasn't that um, yeah that I didn't I didn't need to because I guess my mindfulness is is strong enough uh, at that point um, but uh, there was a kind of the thinking would lead to a, a kind of restlessness and. Uh, it was it was uh, uh, interesting to notice notice that um, is that uh, is that a good way to practice? It's up to you. Okay. You, you, okay. Have to, you have to decide for yourself. But the the goal is to be calm and be still. So whatever okay. way you do it. So this is the kind of we can be creative uh, kind of. Right. Uh, you have to um, improvise, you know, practice yeah. trial and error, okay. whichever method works for you. 
Okay, very good. Good, okay. When did you leave? Yesterday? Yesterday morning. Yes. Okay. okay, did you find coming to the mountain helpful? It's very, very good. Yes, thank you. Yeah. I had a couple uh, a couple of good days of practice. Yeah. Much different from living in, in the city, huh? Yeah, it's much different. Yeah, good. Much, uh, much less d distraction, and uh, I find it, uh, yeah. I want to meditate more when I'm there. So you should come more often. I'd, I'd like to come back as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Go to Samanji now. You come in early today, Samanji. Go ahead, you can speak now. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, last week, Pranajan, I, I sent a question on for mindfulness, on for mindfulness uh, sutta. Uh, there you said that there I asked whether we can choose select either of the four and uh, practice it. And you said like we have to follow step by step. That means we have to start with the first one and then just go ahead with the rest, right? That that means it's a long procedure if we are to enter the path. Yes. Uh, you need to start with mindfulness before you can get the samadhi or, con or concentration or stillness of the mind. You need mindfulness to be the one to still your mind with. Once you can still your mind, then you have equanimity. Then you have the strength to resist your cravings. And the next step, you can go to vipassana. First, investigate the nature of the body so that you can stop your attachment or craving for the body. And yeah, that's then, a lot. Yeah, it's a long process, not that. Yeah, then after that, you go to, to feelings, painful feelings. You want to be able to, to let go of your reaction to the feelings. Okay. Leave it alone. Not be disturbed by whatever type of feelings you might come across. And then, then you go to the emotion, the mind, the mental states, which are the emotions. That's the last step. That, body, feeling, and mind, mental states. This is the wisdom level, or vipassana level. So that's a long process, like we have to start with mindfulness. It depends on how, how smart you are. Okay. The Buddha said you can do it in seven days, or seven months, or seven years. It's depending on what type of student you are, A student, B student, or C student. Okay. If you're an A student, you might be able to do it in seven days. If we have had some experience from our previous birth, then it should be easier for us to practice. Is that That's true? right. If you have, if you practice jhana already, you, if you have jhana already, then it'll be seven days. You can go directly to vipassana. Right. Now, Tana Chan, in your autobiography, I got a hard copy because my sister gave me a hard copy. Like... Uh, uh, she had bought, she had got uh, co two copies uh, once she visited you. Then I read it and like there you say like you practice the meditation uh, all along yourself for like for nearly one year before becoming ordained. So like uh, you did meditation all along yourself and that's the best way to do it because with our like day to day disturbances it's difficult to do it. Like. In our case, uh, we find it difficult to concentrate because we have to go to office and all that. So I'm just thinking of a way to do it. Like, yeah. What did you say in your last sentence? Uh, I like, can hear. Uh, still, we go to office and we have our office commitments and family commitments because of that. Uh, we find it very difficult to find the time to do meditation. Like, uh, I mean, on a regular basis. So maybe you have to find the right reason for you to leave everything. <laughs> if you find the right reason, you could leave everything. But for women, actually, it's very difficult to get ordained to, I mean, to lead a fully religious life. 
I think uh, so that's uh, another problem. It, it depends on each individual, I think. Each, each individual have different uh, strength and wisdom to see that what we are doing right now is dukkha, not not happiness. If you have that that wisdom and you have the the strength to let go of your attachment to your sensual comfort, then you can you can live easily. But you don't with have the, the, irrespective yeah. of our gender, like whether we are women or men. Yeah. If you still see that life is is full of pleasure and happiness, then you will find it hard, difficult to leave. But you find it, it's lots of suffering. Then you 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 want to leave as soon as possible. It's like if you see you're in a in a in a fire, in a burning house. You you don't want to stay in a burning house. You want to get out as soon as possible. The issue is sometimes sometimes we feel that life is a like a place where we get happiness. Uh, maybe sometime later we feel that it's full of suffering. So we kind of uh, so that's the issue. Okay. Yeah, Thank and my next yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I have another question. Like, uh, uh, Queen Mahamaya, Queen Siddhartha's mother was born in Pusita heaven after her death on the seventh day of Prince Siddhartha, Prince Siddhartha's birth. I just want to know where the where this Pusita heaven is located, where the physical location of this. The mind lives in the spiritual world. See, it's not in our physical. The body exists in the physical world. Why the mind exists in the spiritual world? Even right now, your mind isn't in your body. Your mind just communi communicating with your body, like two telephone, like two mobile phone. The, the mind can. So the Buddha went to uh, to see the heaven, uh, to preach the Dhamma. He he connected with the, his psychic power. He used his psychic power. So there's no particular location, like. No, no. Well, you can just say generally in the, in the spiritual world, and the spiritual world is different from our physical world, in which we have the men, we have sizes, we have shape and form, but in the spiritual world, there is no size, shape, or form. It's like empty sky, empty space. And we have also similarly we have read that uh, Devadatta yes. is, is in hell, like that is also I mental. The, yes, these are all, okay. all states of mind. See, you're creating but you different states of mind from your karma. Good karma create happy state of mind. Bad karma create uh, bad state of mind. So it's not a place. It's, it's your state of mind. When you're sad, you're, you're, you're as if you're in hell, when you're sad or when you're depressed. So they when have you, read that uh, uh, Devadatta is undergoing a lot of suffering due to his bad karma, due to what he had done. So like, is it a mental thing? Like, uh, is he suffering is mental? Or? It's like when you go to sleep and have bad dreams. Okay. And if it's good karma, you have good dreams. Like the Buddha's mother have good dreams. She she have good dreams. Why Devadatta have bad dreams? And they will have these good or bad dreams until the karma that they, the good or bad karma they perform run out of steam. And then they can then return and take a human birth again. <laughs> I have, I have three more questions. Can go I ahead, go ahead, ahead, as many as you like. like. Uh, I have read that uh, there's a meditation uh, where people, uh, I think it's called Kasina meditation, uh, where people look at a candle or some sort of light and then uh, they try to concentrate on that light and then they close their eyes and just think about the colors of that uh, uh, light. So it's it a... Uh, is it related to Buddhism, that meditation? Is it? Well, uh, it is in the 40 Kamatana, the 40 subject of meditation. See? If you search the 40 Kamatana, 10 of them is the Kasina. 
Kasina meditation. Yeah. Kasina is like imagining light. color okay. or light. You can imagine okay. a red red color, a green color, a yellow color. A candlelight or candle or lamp light? I'm not sure. I, I, okay. I just know it generally. Since there is an any teacher who teaches casino in Thailand, so we don't usually practice it. We don't usually practice yeah, it. It's yeah. maybe small for someone who had done this in the past before mm -hmm. and uh, know how to do it naturally. But, you know, but to, for most people, I think to have something more physical is easier, like watching your breath than, you, than imagining a color in your mind. It takes a lot of concentration before you can create a, a certain color in your mind when you close your eyes. So you have to have quite advanced mindfulness really to practice kasina, in my opinion. Okay. What I'm doing at the moment is a breath meditation tarnajan. Pardon me? A breath meditation help and exit. Yeah, breath is usually yeah, yeah. is is it's usually suitable for most of us who are beginners. We don't have much mindfulness. Even that, a lot of people find even that difficult. They need to rely on something like meditation beads or chanting or something like that before they can have enough concentration to be able to watch the breath. Still very difficult to keep focus on Ajahn. That's 10, right. 15, yeah. Mm -hmm. As you said, must be due to our other commitments, like uh, we find it difficult to concentrate. But if you put up an effort that try to develop mindfulness all day long, you will find that you go, you you will be able to have lots of mindfulness and be able to start your meditation with watching your breath right away. Okay. Uh, and my next question is, like a lot of Buddhists, uh, like they conduct the Bodhi Puja, they pay respect to the Bodhi tree where the Buddha was born. Uh, like, is it a good practice? A lot of people, they try to go and chant gathas in front of the boat tree and they pray and they ask for several, like they pray that their illnesses may get cured and things like that. Isn't it yeah. another kind of craving? It's, it's wrong view, really. To pay respect is to show your, your trust and belief in the Buddha, the Nama and Sangha, the soul. You want to have strong belief in the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha in order for you to be able to take up the study and the practice. If you're doubtful of the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, then you, you might not want to really study or practice. So when you, when you pay respect, it means you, you have faith in the Buddha. You believe in his enlightenment. You believe that his teaching can lead you to to enlighten them. And you believe that those who follow the Buddha's teaching like the noble disciple was able to attain to enlightenment. So this will then give you the encouragement or inspiration to follow suit. That's the purpose when we go to, when we Paris, when we see the Buddha statue or something like that, we just want to show our respect. But this is not enough, it's just a beginning. Yeah. What we need is to have faith, to have faith in the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, that they are the truly enlightened people, that they can teach us to become enlightened and follow their teaching. What people don't understand is they become more like superstitious. They think the Buddha is like a god or some, some, yeah. somebody who can grant them their riches. Even not the Buddha, just the Buddha statue. We have lots of temples in Thailand with big Buddha statues where people go and ask for favors, you know, whatever they want. Some get and some don't get. So this can make people say, well, ah, it, you can you make them still hopeful that they can get. But if they don't get, then they just think, oh, it's not yet their time. <laughs> They just have to be more patient. And my last question, now in five precepts, uh, uh, like uh, we have been asked to abstain from uh, taking intake of alcohol and all, is it a sin? Like uh, uh, the 
fifth fifth one. Like the fifth the, one is the fifth one is really a, not not the it, it's not breaking the it's not it's, hurt, not, it, it's not what we call um so breaking that is not a sin right it's not a unless sin, we, but, but it's, it, it can contribute to your sinful action it can push you to do sinful action easily because when you drink and you get drunk you cannot control your thoughts your speech and your action so if you think bad, you can then put, talk badly and do things badly. Yeah. So, so it's better not to drink in order to be be mindful. When you when you when you're drunk, you 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 lose your mindfulness. That's why we have been asked not to uh, take a drink. But That's it's, right. Uh, yeah. But uh, for example, if a person takes a glass of wine, also it is still considered a sin, like under it's, it's a violation of five, one of the precepts, right? It is, but it, it probably doesn't, as long as you don't do any bad action, then it doesn't, it, 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 it's, it's sinful. But the problem is sometimes when you take one drink, you want you want to take a second from, drink, okay. yeah. yeah, that's a problem. So the best thing is to not to take any drink at all, but then. Actually, a friend of mine told me that it's medically, doctors even advise to take a glass of wine or so saying that it's good for heart and he's told me that he has read somewhere that it's not a sin uh, uh, to take a bit of wine and like he read it somewhere too that's why i asked that question but can you yeah. guarantee that you only take one drink that's that's the problem okay maybe when you're more stressful you feel one drink is done now what then what you do you have to take a second drink yeah. that's why we have been asked not to so it's better not to play with fire at all. You could get burned eventually. Okay. <laughs> okay, then, Ajahn. Okay, that's thank you for your all. question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you I so think much. Your question is very helpful for other people as yeah. well, I think. Thank you so okay. Much. Continue so on with your good work. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Okay, you're welcome. Alvin from Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Namaskar, Tanajan. I don't have any questions, just listening in. Okay. Thank you. Marsha from Ohio, if I remember correctly. If I don't, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, no, thank you, thank you, and good morning. Um, I think I have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is about disenchantment, Nibida, and over the years, I've been observing that some of the meditations I have where I feel like I'm getting the insight and actually seeing a truth versus just thinking about it because I've read about it, there's usually some real disenchantment or a little bit of disgust just with life and existence in general. and. Sometimes it just comes up spontaneously, but I've also tried, you know, sometimes when I sit down to meditate, I'll just begin with like a, a reflection on disenchantment and try to bring that disgust up right at the start of the meditation. And I've been wondering if. You know, if that's like a real ne necessary ingredient, like the factors of enlightenment, it seems like disenchantment is usually there too. And I wondered if you could just talk about it a little bit, the role of Nibida. Well, I haven't really think of it in this term. I think that when you see that life is suffering, this is disenchantment. So, okay. and the way to see it, the Buddha recommend us to constantly thinking of aging, sickness, and death. That we are all, once we are all, we are born, we are subjected to aging, sickness, and death, and separation. And the more you contemplate on this thing, it will sing into your mind. And maybe one day you say, what the hell are we living for anyway? 
what are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this, can can you call this this enchantment or this illusion? Um, I'm still working in the meditation, you know, on the concentration, and I seem to get in into those states of emptiness and i always try to remember what you said to just stay there as long as i can i'm also observing that when the concentration becomes steady first that holds by itself like it sustains itself and I can be aware of the breath. I can even be aware of a few thoughts. And yet there's this steady, like, concentration force that's, like, right there that just holds the meditation. Um, and then there's usually, in that, I'm speculating to think that it's also equanimity because there's like no no real wavering or no preference and i've never i'm sorry me, your, your sound went dead temporarily okay can you repeat what you said <laughs> maybe i am okay so in the meditation, there's like a concentration force. And it like the body becomes real solid. It's like it's immovable, a like a, a yeah. log, like a rock. Yeah. And there can be even, I can be aware of the breath, even a few thoughts can come and go. But this rock-like concentration is still there. Um, is that equanimity? Is that by itself? I think you're itself? getting there. Equanimity? What you're lacking is the feeling of bliss. <laughs> yes. Um, once you get there, you'll know, oh, this is so blissful. Uh, when you, your mind becomes totally still, it's a feeling okay. that you haven't, it's kind of happiness that you haven't experienced before in your life so okay. just keep on watching your breath no, and try not to analyze anything just keep watching hmm. and when the sometimes the breath well most of the time the breath becomes it, it starts to go away it doesn't go away but the breath becomes like very shallow so it's not as easy to use it as an object and then i try to just look at the mind itself like latch on to the awareness is that wrong i think so i think you should watch continue watching the breath the buddha said whether it's shallow or whether it's deep just just know it for what it is that's all just keep watching okay okay i will do that thank you so much for helping okay no, that, no, that don't, don't force your breath don't control your breath just watch it leave the breath naturally alone if it's going to be short or shallow let it be just keep watching, just being aware of it. That's all. Okay. Okay. And don't go to any to the mind or any other object. Because I think watching the breath is 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 the one that will steal your mind. Okay, try it. Just keep continuing watching your breath. At one point, don't follow your breath in or out. Just watch it at the tip of your nose, at the entrance of the breath, in and out of the breath, where the, where the breath touches your, your, your nostril or your, your upper lips. Just keep watching at that point only. Can you hear me? Okay.
Okay. You want to speak? Uh, have you turn on your microphone? Okay. Gosh. Yeah, you can speak. I now. used to shift. Go ahead. I used to sh um, switch the focus from the abdominal. You should stay fixed in one point I'll because skip. you want you want to stop the mind from working from doing things. So you have to stay in one point okay. to become mm -hmm. totally still. And so then the focus actually, would I keep it at the same right point, at the, the tip of the nose, at yeah. the same point? Well, you, when, when you started with, with the point, you stay with that point. With Even point. if there's no breath, just stay at that point and, and just know that there's no breath or you cannot feel the breath. Just stay at the same point. Okay, okay. Try I know I'm see. doing something wrong. I'm trying to see how, how it works. I think eventually your mind will drop, will drop into calm if you stay in the same point. Okay, okay. When yeah. You feel, when you feel a sense of release, the pressure and everything disappear and you feel floating in on thin air or something like that in space. Okay. Yeah that that, that is that is good. I will try that. Because I feel like I, I get so close and then it's like I'm stuck. Yeah, but don't anticipate, okay? Don't anticipate okay. The, you have to stay with your breath. Don't go to the anticipating the result from your 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 practice. Once you do that, you you lose your concentration and you won't get there. Okay, I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna work on that. Thank uh, you, thank uh, you. So much. Or if you have result from your past, when you do it now, you don't think about the result that you had in the past either, and don't anticipate for that result to happen when you meditate. Just keep watching. Just keep focusing, concentrating on your breath at one point. And if anything comes up, appears, just don't be distracted. Just leave them, leave everything alone. Don't be distracted by, maybe you, there might be light or sound or anything, or something happened like something happened to your body or something. Just, just ignore everything. They are usually mental proper. Uh, mental fabrication. Your mind just creates this, this thing to distract you. Okay. okay. Yes. Yes. Thank All you. Right. Try it. Yeah, I I'm going to. All right. I promise. I promise I will. Okay. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Sammy. Are you in India now? Okay. He's in India. Yes, I'm in India. Are you near Namasala, near where the venerable? Uh, no, I'm in Bodh Gaya. Bodh Gaya. the uh, the uh, Bodhi Temple. Bodhi Temple, okay. Uh -huh, Bodhi Temple. I think there are Thai, Thai temples around there too, right? But I think they're more Is for it, tourists. Uh, actually, uh, now I'm staying in the Korean monastery, uh, but uh, I check with the Thai monastery. They don't uh, host uh, like foreigners, mainly like for uh, Thai people. Like mm -hmm. pretty much in this area, every temple is like for their own nationality, right? Yeah, more or less. I think it's yeah. more like a hotel, hotel for pilgrims to, to stay. Yeah, 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 pretty much. But I get some quiet here. Uh, so uh, I think, you know, for now, it's okay. I'm still trying to, you know, decide because uh, my visa is only until July and then uh, we're going to Thailand. So, okay. So, uh, yeah, but mainly my problem has been dealing with the heat, the extreme heat. And I actually had uh, like a heat stroke just three or four days ago. The temperatures were 47. Uh, and I had to go outside of the temple. I had some things to do, and I got a heat stroke. And uh, 
you know, it was uh, really tough. And that's also not the first time I used to have those in Myanmar. And I'm also worried I'm going to have them in Thailand <laughs> because I heard right now Thailand is also going through. Where we are, uh, like where, where we are, we have about thirty-four right now, thirty-four degrees. Yeah, but um, in like Thailand, Myanmar, and those countries, uh, thirty-four is not just thirty-four. There's like thirty-four, and there's like a ninety like percent, hundred percent humidity. Yeah. Then it comes out like the real field will be so much. Mm -hmm. So I heard that thirty Thai people died because of the heat, like the recent. Uh, Heat wave going on there. I think there, there are some who die, but very few, not 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 to be alarming, you know. Oh. Usually yeah, some yeah. people don't know how to deal with the heat properly, that's uh, that caused them to die. Yeah. Uh, I come from a cold country. I'm not used to this heat. It's like mm -hmm. you know. Uh, well, if you want to meditate and practice, you have to consider heat is a, one of the tests that you have to to pass through to, to be able to go over. Absolutely. Dukkha Vedana, we call it Dukkha Vedana. Oh, yeah. I know that when someone has developed their concentration good enough, that they will have higher tolerance for heat and cold. That's right. Uh, if you have Mobe Khan, then you can... Uh, you, you, you can access with with whatever you know. Yeah, because a lot of that heat is also uh, mental. We also generate like anger generates heat. You know, desire generates heat. All that when it gets stilled down, then uh, also I think you know somehow I don't know <laughs> that you'll be able to deal also with that environmental heat. When your mind becomes calm, it becomes cool, and it, and it can deal with any situation. You won't be so hot-headed anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, no, no questions, then, John. I'm still okay. trying to I hope you are doing good with your meditation practice. Just keep doing it. Don't be discouraged. Just keep pushing yourself. Sometimes uh, you're right on because, uh, uh, you know, like last week, you know, we we're talking about that uh, experience and all, but this week has been like completely different. So uh, you write about that discouragement part because uh, it could be like, you know, a whole dry week with absolutely like no improvement and you're just dealing with like some uh emotional stuff uh, outside things and then uh, you know then the meditation suffers and the concentration again like you have to start building up almost it seems from scratch yeah just like learning when you're a child learning how to walk you have to crawl first and stand before you can walk and you might walk for a couple of steps and you have to crawl again so it's just a, man, it's a process of learning. You have to keep learning and keep being patient, keep doing you know, what you have to do. And you'll be more efficient, more, you know, more proficient next time. Yeah. Okay. Good luck to you. Thank you, Yeah, Kok Singh from Singapore. Uh, breathing Prajan, yeah. This evening, I'd like to ask Prajan. I was reflecting on what Prajan advised me that if I am uh, unable to attain jhana, at least I will think of rationality of uh, loving kindness and compassion. And uh, I was reflecting on this that a few years back when at when I was having a meal at a coffee shop. So a few tables away, there was this old lady. She was having some difficulties opening the cover of a book container. So when I noticed this, I went forward to her table there and asked in Chinese whether she needs my help to open the cover. And I was shocked when she 
uh, uh, she scolded me and in Chinese say, oh, uh, she didn't ask me for help. Uh, why do I bother? And uh, she also added that if she cannot open, she'll just throw away. And when I noticed that she doesn't want any help, so I returned to my, my seat and she kept scolding and scolding. So at that, at that uh, time of point, my mind was very calm and uh, very tranquil. And I, I don't feel there's no reaction at all. I don't feel angry or anything like that. But I was uh, 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 but I was surprised that a few days later, weeks later, then this mind was uh, was disturbed and then was being traumatized that the that drama was keep playing over and over again. So my question was that why was it that at that point of time my mind was calm uh, and very peaceful, non-reactive, but a few days later and uh, even a few months later, then the mind was uh, being very disturbed and then that drama keep repeating the mind. And uh, so I was thinking, how come the mind, uh, when the thing happened, the mind was calm? And a few weeks later, the mind become very disturbed and and actually traumatized. So I, so, so I was thinking, why the mind behave in this way? Because you lost your equanimity when you were in the when 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 you when, when things happen, you had equanimity, so you remain calm. But then when you think about it later on and your mind doesn't have equanimity, it can react with anger also. Yes, actually the mind feel angry that, oh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's an uh, unfairness, injustice, that I'm mm -hmm. trying to I try to be compassionate, and I'm getting all these, uh, uh, all these insults, all these uh, hurtful words, all these scoldings for nothing. Yes, you you can use you can use rationality and hurt yourself. That this is a good lesson for you not to bother with people when they don't ask for your help. You know, wait for them to ask for help before you go do anything for them. And yeah, actually, uh, I was also uh thinking about reflecting on this one when I saw my neighbors. Uh, they had the. I saw the newspapers piling up at their doorstep, so meaning that they were away uh, for a few days. And uh, this time round, they didn't ask me to collect the newspapers for them. So I was thinking whether to collect the papers for them or just leave it uh, as it is. So I was a bit hesitant in, in that sense also. So, yeah. Well, so, you, you're not obligated. You're not obligated to do because you're not asked to do. But if you want to do, you can still do it, but don't expect any thankfulness from people if they're not thankful. Just just do it for the sake of being doing something good. But if if people don't appreciate what you do, don't feel sad about it. That's all. Can you do that? I think I will have to uh train the mind so that as uh what Prajan was saying, uh at that point of time, my I, uh, I, my mind is in equanimous, but subsequently my mind, I think, lost this equanimity, so the mind can become angry, become agitated uh, over this kind of unfair treatment. That's right. So I think you should be more concerned with your equanimity than with what other people are doing or not doing. It's not your business, really. Our business is to look after our mind. Okay. Um, and yeah. we can do it. We can do things that we are asked to do. And if we can do it, we do it. If we are asked to do things and we, we cannot do it, then we just don't do it. But that's not, if we have equanimity, we won't feel, feel bad or feel sad. Okay. Um, yeah. Another question I have. Uh, Prajan. Uh, and that is uh, uh, during meditation retreat, I uh, I was uh, disturbed when there are some uh, there's there's one retreatant who claims to be able to communicate with the the uh, the so called the supernatural uh, world the spiritual world, 
uh, and then he's uh, wearing a lot of amulets and so on. So I feel very uncomfortable when there are people saying they are doing this kind of uh, business and so on. So I, uh, I, I, I feel not comfortable with people like them. But uh, when they are in the but the monas the monastery is open to people from all walks of life. So when there are people like this who are meditating in the same meditation hall as myself, I feel very uneasy that there are uh, people of such a nature. So so I uh, like to ask why is Pra Ajahn advice? Because you don't have equanimity. <laughs> so you have to practice mindfulness and meditate to get equanimity. Once you have equanimity, then what type of people, uh, any type of people won't bother you, whether they're good or bad. So you need more, more practice or mindfulness. When you feel disturbed, it means your mind doesn't have enough equanimity to remain calm. So you should uh -huh. do more mindfulness and meditation rather than trying to go change people. So meaning I have to try to attain jhana states to uh, achieve equanimity? Uh, I, I don't say that. Maybe you don't even need to jhana, just like, as long as you can use mindfulness, like reciting a mantra for five or ten minutes for you to forget about those people. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yes, if, if it's good if you can enter into jhana, but if you cannot, at least use mindfulness to pull your mind away from those people that you feel bad about, not to think about them, not try to judge them or anything, and just forget about them, that's all. Okay, I will uh, try to do that if I encounter such incidents again. Yes, whenever you feel sad, feel bad, or feel angry at something, use mantra, pull yourself away from those, those objects. So just recite Buddha, Buddha. Yeah, and not think about those objects that cause you to have bad feelings or anger. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll it, try it. In order to do it effectively, you have to practice Buddha a lot before before you run into things. Because if you don't practice, when you run in, into things, you might not be able to, to recite Bhutto because you might keep thinking about the things that makes you angry or sad. Uh, so now in my Samatha uh, Bhavana, I've been uh, practicing, uh, yeah, instead of uh, watching the, uh, the breath, I use Buddha Buddha in uh, as my samatha meditation. And also when, for mindfulness also, when you're not sitting, when what when you're doing something or whatever you do, just keep reciting Bhutto, Bhutto, as much as possible. Yes, yeah, even when I'm walking uh, yeah. long distance. Yes, uh, from the time you get up, as soon as you open up your eyes, start Bhutto. Okay. And only stop Bhutto only when you have to think of, of something. Okay. If you don't have to think, then keep reciting Bhutto. You can stop Bhutto when your mind don't think about anything. Okay, I will recite Bhutto whenever I do not need to do any thinking. Yes, so stop your mind from thinking about this or that, thing or people. Okay, I will do it. Okay, try it, okay? Yes. Okay, we'll go to our sim. Our sim. Are you in Kuala Lumpur? Go ahead. Good evening, Anajana. I'm in Benang, not Kuala Lumpur. Benang, okay. But now I have no question. Thank you. Okay, all right. I'll go to Alfredo. Alfredo, can you hear me? I think he walks away from the screen, from the from the camera. I'll come to back. You come back to Alfredo later. Go to Intan from Intan from Indonesia. Good evening, Sajan. 
I don't have question, Prajan. Okay. Then I'll go to New Zealand with Anura and Ramya. Good evening, Tanajan. So thanks for all the answers. So it's uh, good, good to listen in. And over the weekend, uh, last weekend, we had a, we visited the Vimuti Monastery in Auckland. And mm. we had, we participated in Dana and did some meditation. It's a very good, peaceful place. So that was uh, quite insightful, useful uh, visit. Yeah. And How many moms are there? Now uh, there are two monks, uh, one from Ajahn Kusarachito, I think he's a disciple of Luan Polim. Mm -hmm. And also there's another Bante Avidaja. It's a, I think it's from Czech. There are two monks there now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a very peaceful, peaceful place. This is our first time to visit the place and we spend the day pretty much there. And uh, yeah, that's a that's a good place. Yeah. Yes. Try to find a, a quiet place to to meditate. Yeah, we need to. There are some kutis in the bush, so uh, we we plan to spend some time there just to practice in the bush, so test ourselves. So that's something that we are planning to do. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And practice is good, Dajan. So. Um, even though I'm fully working, but uh, I try to meditate in the morning, so I use less mantra now. It's uh, just being aware of the breath, so it's, it's it's getting better now. So I I see I follow your instructions. So I always recall what you said and listen to your. I have bookmark few talks that you have given some of the instructions, so it's it's quite helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. you for that. Yeah. Okay, good. You're welcome. Yeah. What, what about Ramya? Anything? Yes, I was trying to improve my mindfulness. Okay. okay. Just practice mindfulness. You can do that all the time. Yes. Okay. All right, I'll okay. go back to Alfredo now. Alfredo from Sao Paulo. You moved to a new room? Yes. <laughs> what, happened, what happened to your old room? Uh, my home? Your old oh, room. I... Your old room. This is a new room, right? You, before you weren't in this room. New room? Yeah, no, are, it's the same room you were last time. It looks different. Yes. It looks different. Oh no, oh. the same. Same room. Okay. I, I I change I change the oh, the, the background. The bed. Okay, uh, the, the the uh, I change, okay. but uh, six months six months more or less. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how is everything with you? Okay. Yes, my health is, is a little a little good. And your mind? My mind is okay. okay. Uh, my my samatha is uh, I look for samatha, ne, but the samatha is, is the difference yeah, in the practicing. Yes, yeah. peka, peka. Okay. The difference that the people that practice and not practice is meditation, ne, but. A people you... that a people that don't have meditation is uh -huh. not a practice in Ebante. Mm -hmm. Only only Vipassana without Samatha is uh, uh, peoples that work, peoples that married, peoples that yeah. uh, uh, that uh, things in life uh, don't meditation Ebante. Meditation for for them for 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 few time is is not enough nebante no you need to practice full time you get yes it. but if you if you could not then you just do as much as you can now and hopefully in the future do more 
Yes. You have to start somewhere first. Maybe one hour a day is better than not practicing at all. Yes. Then you can add more and more as you as you move on. You can add to two hours, three hours. Yes. Then, you know, as as if you find beneficial, you feel that you find that you're happier, then you'll do more eventually. Yes. But you have to start. If you don't start at all, then you won't you won't get anywhere. Yeah, it's study, study, study is vipassana, but no, well, vipassana also, but not not yet vipassana. It's just study to learn the way how to practice. Yes. Okay, let's keep practicing, studying. Like right now, we are studying. We are talking about Buddhism. We are talking about meditation practice. This is studying. Yes. Once we know what to do, then we go and and do it. Yes. Okay. Don't don't do karma, but don't do karma. <laughs> okay. I I I smile, but it's very it's very. It's strange, no? it's very different, but it's, it's, it's really, no? but, but it's really, don't do karma. Okay. Not understand, but don't, don't do karma, don't, the mm -hmm. uh, enlightened person, don't do karma. Okay. Don't have future, mm -hmm. don't have problems in life. A perfect, a perfect uh, mind, and mm -hmm. It's possible. It's is 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 different, but uh, but uh, mm, it's the goal, Nebant. It's the goal, the goal. The goal is to get rid of suffering. Yes, yes, yes. No suffering. Yeah. Calm okay. the mind. Okay. Good luck. Okay, to but. You. Yeah, yesterday, yesterday I fall on my motorcycle. <laughs> I see. Uh, did Did you get hurt? Not, 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 no, no. Okay. The 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 woman opened the door of car. I see. I, so I you, changed. You ran into the the door. Huh? Yes, I hit in the door, <laughs> and follow. <laughs> Newton, 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 Newton is <laughs> the. <laughs> <laughs> you have any scratches? Yes, 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 I crash, I crash. Okay. But it's okay, okay, okay. All right, okay. All right, I'll see you again later. See you. Next, Philip from Malaysia. Good evening, John. I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, I don't have any questions tonight. I'm uh, just happy to be listening in. Okay, go to second. Second from California. Hello, Tana Jan. Good evening. Uh, good, good, morning. Uh, yeah, good morning and good evening. Thank you. What time is it in California now? Five or six? <laughs> it's just about to be 7 a.m. Oh, 7, okay. Um, so yes, thank you, Tana Jan. Um, a few questions came to my mind. Mm, one was Tanajan that many times when I want to visit monasteries, mm, we are a little spoiled by the comforts in big cities. And sometimes, you know, it comes in my mind, oh, well, will there be running hot water? Or, oh, you know, um, the other day we went to this beautiful monastery, but um, they had a compost toilet. And I was so uncomfortable using that, you know, um, uh, that uh, the thought of staying at that beautiful monastery, uh, but then, oh, but then there's this toilet, which is not very comfortable for me. So I was just curious, um, what's the way for me to work with this um, aversion? You just have to keep doing it, train yourself to to do the, Thing that that doesn't come to, doesn't isn't comfortable for you, because in life sometimes you have to 
run into uncomfortable situation. So you just have to, to, to teach yourself to, to learn to, to do whatever you, situation you are in. Try not to, to have any aversion for it. Yeah, certainly. Thank you, Tanajan. Um, I had um, one other question. Um, a friend of mine reached out to me yesterday and he was talking about a third, a common friend of ours um, who had passed away last year uh, or last to last year. And now her mom also passed away and he was um, sharing how uh, now her father's all alone and so on. Mm. Somewhere I didn't feel like, I felt that these are now, you know, thanks to the Buddha, Lord Buddha's teachings and guidance um, from Sangha. Uh, I felt that, well, this is part of life and I didn't feel very reactive to it. Or, um, but then my friend was quite, like he seemed to be a little upset that why am I not reacting and why am I not, you know, um, perturbed about these things? Mm. How, how should one respond in such situations or am I responding in the wrong way? Or could you share any guidance, please? Respond to the death of the person or respond to the criticism of your friend? Mm. Uh, I think respond to the death of both actually, Tanajana. Uh, well, things happen and it's already happened. What, what you're going to do? You're going to cry and it's not going to change anything. Just be, you know, just tell, tell the person that there's nothing you can do when things already happen. And to feel, to sad, to feel sad about it is not good for you. So why should you feel sad, right? I think you and your friend have different information and you have more, you, are, you have more, what you call, um, protection from this truth. You have more information. So you, you don't react as bad as your friend who doesn't have enough information about this truth. So he can react much stronger than you, you do. Yes, Tanajan, that makes sense. And yes, thank you, Tanajan. Um, also, my wife, Nita, is here off camera. Do you have any questions? Uh -huh. She has a question as well. Please go ahead. Good morning, Tanajan. Good morning. Um, my, my question was uh, related to self-doubt. Um, I keep feeling that I have self-doubt within me uh, in my workplace, and now in the Dhamma world, I keep thinking that people are doing so much better than me. People are so much devoted. And uh, so I wanted to understand how to get uh, over this feeling. Well, we have to accept the truth that people are different. There are people who are better than us, but there are also people who are worse than us also. Sometimes we forget those people who are worse than us. We only look at people who are better, so it makes us feel bad. So in order for us to feel good, we have to look at some people who are few, who are less fortunate than we are or worse than we are. See, in this world, we have different people, different type of people. Some they are better, some, some they are equal, and some they are worse than we are. This is the way things is in this world. And if you want to be better, then you just have to work harder. That's all. Um, so, Tanajan, is it okay to keep comparing? Because I think my mindfulness has increased and I, when I observe my mind, it keeps comparing with anybody and anything. <laughs> That's right. You just have to compare the, the, the whole thing, not just part of the thing that you compare. You only compare yourself with those who are better than you are. So that makes you feel bad. See? So compare yourself with people who are equal to you or worse than you are also. 
you have to have a complete picture of, of people living on, on this earth. Okay. So then we, then you can accept your place in on this earth. That, okay, you know, I'm in the middle, not too bad, not too good. <laughs> <laughs> but if I want to be better, you, I, I can work at it. So you can, you, you can improve yourself if you want to be better. It's just that you have to work harder, that's all. I can work. The Buddha <laughs> said that when you see people who are better than you are, you should congratulate them, feel happy with them. And if you if you see people who are worse than, than you are and you cannot do anything about it, you just have to have compassion for them or equanimity. We are we are what we are because of our good or bad karma, the Buddha said. We are different because of, of our good or bad karma. So if we want to be better, we have to do more good karma. Thank you. Thank you. I have one more question. Um, so I was lately thinking, um, I used to be more compassionate, but about, for example, if I look at a dead animal, I would really feel sad and cry. But um, these days, I, I look at it, I feel bad, but then I move on. Uh, that that extreme emotion doesn't come anymore. Um, but then I was thinking, is it equanimity or is it indifference? So I, I... If you don't feel sad, it's equanimity. Equanimity doesn't mean you don't do anything. If you could help, you, you do. If you could not help, you just have to let it be. But you don't you don't need to feel sad about things. So it depends. If you're in, in a situation in which you can do something and you don't do, then that is in, indifferent. But if you're in, in a situation in which there's nothing you can do, then you just remain calm and just let it be. And this is equanimity. But you don't feel sad. You don't feel sad. Sometimes it happens like, um, I at the moment I feel I can't do anything more and then I move on. And later I think, oh, I could have done that. Maybe I should have put in more effort, but I didn't do it. And then okay. I self-criticize. Then you can use this as a as a lesson for you next time that you should do better. Use the mistake that you have as a teacher to teach you to do better next time. Okay, is this good enough? Yes, thank you, Kanada. Okay, you're welcome. Next, we'll go to Piao and Indira in Toronto. Good morning. Uh, Good morning Tana from Jan. Toronto, Tana Jan. How are you both? Good? Very good. Thank you. Yes, okay. Thank you. Practicing. Yes. All right. You have any comment, Dr. Pia? Uh, okay. Um, maybe I just want to bit a deep, uh, deep into the participant part there a bit. I think it was, uh, I don't think it came up today, but uh, when you the 12 steps, when you look at the 12 links, theoretically, uh, before the sensor starts working, uh, below before the salayatana, you're already, your mind act, is already active. Avijaya pachya sankara, sankara pachya vinyana, meaning you're, you're consciously aware of your thoughts. So in other words, it says the eye doesn't want to see, your mind want your eye to see. The, 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 the sensors doesn't want to see. Ear doesn't want to hear. Your mind wants you to hear something. So it is correct because the mind is already active before your senses come into action. Well, your mind is always active whether the senses come in or not, see. Hmm. Your mind is always working. Even when you go to sleep, your mind still keep working. Hmm. So, I, 
the mind will only start to react when the sense sensual objects come into the mind. When you see something, then your mind will start to process what you see, which we call perception. And then after perception, we get feelings from, from what we see. Yes. And, my question is, mind is even before the perception, before the, the salayatana, the uh, senses, mind is uh, preemptively trying to figure out uh, what to see. Like the mind is directing you. Uh, that's what the participant part there starts like, we just, because of our ignorance, our, our previous memories somehow trigger. I think this has also something very similar in science, uh, similar explanation in science. The mind is active before our senses become uh, aware of certain things. Uh, it's, it's called predict predictive. Sankara, uh, sankara mm. creates craving. Yeah, that's right. Sankara. Cra when you when you think you think of food, you think of. Uh, movies to see, places to go, see. So mm. this is all craving, created by craving. Sankara. Mm. Then you go after those things by, go, yeah. by going to, 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 to get whatever you, you want to have. Yeah. So your feeling is the main bait, like when you feel, what you feel you perceive, you want to perceive more, and then you think about it, what you feel you perceive, what you perceive you think about, that's what the the sutras talk about how it kind of the uh, the the pro, uh, cognitive process how it works. So I mean sometimes you see things uh, maybe you pass through you don't perceive uh, like you don't have the feeling for that when you feel for something uh, pleasant or unpleasant then uh, what you feel you perceive more and then you think about more and then the craving there of course the feeling which leads to craving obviously and that's why as you say. We want to think about it more and more. See, you want to stop the, the craving because mm -hmm. cravings keep feeding on more cravings. Mm -hmm. And in order to stop cravings, you have to think of the opposite. Like if you see, if you think of good food, you think of the of bad food in, to mm -hmm. replace your, your cravings. The food that you yeah. eat is going to be bad food soon, sooner or later. <laughs> Once it enter your body, <laughs> so that's the antidote. You have to think yeah, about antidote. Uh, yeah. yeah, antidote like the injection. You put the injection in, uh, yeah. like a vaccine. Vaccine to to counter the the virus that enter you into yeah. your body. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's at least you can try to contemplate, but the virus is already in the body. In other words, in the mind. Yeah. The defilements is the other part, the hard to get rid of. At least you can be through discipline, you can uh, get rid of like maybe precepts or you know, meditation. But the virus is already in our memories, which is still active, like underlying sleeping or anusha. It's the one that is, uh, creates the havoc in there. You don't see it. Like, it's like the weeds under the, <clears throat> under the, when you do gardening, you see a lot of weeds, but you see most of you remove it, but there's still more weeds. But you don't see it. When the time comes, it comes up. <clears throat> the anusha, the, the, uh, the underlying defilements. Mm -hmm. So you just have to use, keep, keep getting, getting rid of them by using. Yeah. So that's the wisdom, wisdom part. Wisdom, wisdom, yeah, wisdom, dukha, that's right. manata. Yeah. So that's what I thought recently. So mm -hmm. the wisdom is the one that takes out the anusha, the underlying, the sleeping mm -hmm. defilements. Mm -hmm. But uh, the sealer, that like virtue you can get rid of being precepts. You can see the most obvious defilements. You can at least stop or refrain from like not taking alcohol, not killing, not stealing. So those are the like, sealer. The samadhi part will uh, kind of stop the recurrent defilements like the, uh, the hindrances. But this, as you say, the, the wisdom part will take out the underlying, the lowest part of the, which you don't see, obviously. Sila Samadhi Prajna. Okay. No, I'm wisdom, just, yeah, yeah. wisdom yeah. will get rid permanently of permanently. the, of the defilement. Samadhi can only suppress it temporarily. Temporary. So, so it, it can come out, although Samadhi is suppressing yeah, the once, jhanas. Once you come out of jhana, all your cravings can return. But if you use wisdom to get rid yeah. of your craving, yeah. they won't return. Because you see that craving is the cause of your suffering. 
So you don't want to crave, you don't want to suffer. So the measurement of your wisdom, like where your defilements or astravas or cans are gone, Buddha said you cannot say it, it was yesterday, day before, or five weeks ago. It's like it's like the a person who is doing a, a, a like a carpenter. He said his handle is worn off, but he cannot say when the handle is worn off. But he can say his handle is now worn off. So when you pra keep practicing, you can eventually see oh my handle or my defilements are less or my astravas are Cans which comes up are less. You you kind of reflect. You can record. I mean, you can uh, reflect within. I suppose, but you can't say when, what, which, when, which, uh, what day. Well, when 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 you can stop your craving, you know, you know mm. you 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 can stop them. See, when you cannot yet stop them, you know you cannot yet stop them. <laughs> So it just it's just in, inside yourself, you know. Mm. So coming back to the second noble truth, the craving. That's that's simple as that. That's right. Once you can get rid of your craving, then you know there will, there'll be no suffering for you anymore. So the duty of the second noble truth is to get rid of craving. And once you get, get rid of craving fully, then you know you've done your job, right? That's the third state. You need the tool, which is the fourth one. So you need the tool fourth to one. get rid of your second. You need the fourth truth to get rid of your second truth. Yeah. You so need the path wisdom. Path. You need yeah. the three characteristics of existence. Yeah. So that's the path, the phone, uh, eightfold path, like the yes. prescription. Yeah. That's the prescription. <laughs> you see, everything is impermanent. Yeah. By being impermanent, it can yeah. only give you suffering or sadness. Yeah. So Dukkha, yeah, the doctor is uh, like Buddha is like a good doctor. Say you are sick. Uh, this is a cause of sickness because of craving, and you can you have to get rid of it. And this is a prescription. That's right. Just like when you have obesity, patient yeah. you say oh, you eat too much, you have to <laughs> go on a diet. Yeah. <laughs> True. Now nowadays there are everyone comes to us for injections. So there are new injections for so lose weight. So they don't want to go on a diet now, shortcuts. Uh, so yeah. everyone, every, like I had at least two or three people coming every day on these new injections to lose weight. They, they, they are too lazy. I, I guess they, if there is an injection for enlightenment, people will take it, but there is no, you have hard work. Okay. <laughs> you have to become a monk like me. <laughs> hard work. Thank you, Dante. I'll let you go. You have any Tana Jan, I have a, uh, it's just a small question. Now, the priest says, if you uh, break a precept, it is you make bad karma. So, like the first one, pana di panta. If you kill, you get bad karma. But the fifth one, I, like I was a little confused listening to it. So, um, like I was under the uh, impression, if you take intoxicants, it's bad karma. So it's not. You can. Uh, <clears throat> it's not bad karma in the sense that you're not hurting anybody. You're only hurting yourself. Okay. So you that don't have any retribution from this karma from other people. If you kill someone, you, you might get retribution from from the okay. relatives or friends. But when you drink and get drunk, you don't you don't get any retribution if you don't go hurt other people. So it is only you're hurting yourself. Like you're you only can hurting yourself. Fall and hit your head and get a subdural hematoma you can die or you can you know or you can have hurt your liver you know you can uh, get cancer so you're I, hurting right or it can prevent you from meditating because when you drink yeah. you cannot you cannot yeah. meditate see. So i think that's the idea right uh, yeah. uh, you know uh, the the mind uh, uh, it says majja pama pramada meaning you become heedless majja pamada tana meaning you become heedless by drinking suramere majja pama the drinking is considered to be abhaya mukha. Have you heard of the word abhaya no. mukha? No. See, there are five abhaya mukha, which if you do, it can lead you to go to be born in the lower realm of existence. Like oh, drinking, gambling, vices. These are vices. Oh, vices, I see. Yeah. Drinking, gambling, uh, going, uh, visiting. Sexual. 
yeah, I think going so. out at night. You know. Yeah, I see. And being lazy, and keep people who like to drink as your as your companion. People who like to drink or gamble as your companion. It's not good to have them as your companion or friend mm. because mm. they will they will pull you to go do what they like to do. If they like mm. to drink, they'll 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 want to get you to go drink with them. See. Mm. So these are the five practices that we should avoid. Because if we if we don't avoid these practices, we can be stuck in and and go and do bad karma later on. When we drink and we get drunk, we cannot control our, our actions. Then we can go hurt other people when we feel like hurting other people. Mm. Yeah, and also even like five precepts are so important because even to become so one, I mean, unless you keep the five precepts, it's... Yeah, I think one, one, uh, once, uh, once Ajahn Brahm was here in Toronto and somebody asked, uh, is it okay if I take a small drink or little drink. little drink i said yeah, ajan bram said is it okay if you kill a little person or little lie is it the same <laughs> so he, he said no <laughs> little drink or little lie or little killing is all all <laughs> bad <laughs> it's interesting <laughs> okay thank you Bhante. thank you okay, thank you so much aparachita from dubai <clears throat> Good evening, Raja. Good evening to you. Um, I've been um, trying to practice a little bit of uh, you saying to keep the word Bhutto throughout the day. Yes. And uh, more than being able to, I think it's also very revealing to realize how much random thinking I have. Mm -hmm. And that is a good uh, way to just say, there's really no point in the way I jump from one thought to another. So that that clarity kind of helps me to just abandon that and pick up the word again. So that's just what I felt. It has been a very good uh, practice to keep. Yes, because when you recite Bhutto, you clear your mind out. We a lot of unnecessary thought, you know, which can cause you sad feeling to arise or bad feeling to arise. So you are you you will feel lighter and and, and happier you know, yes. when you, when you don't think. Yes. That's or true. when you think less. <clears throat> and you'll find yeah. easier when you meditate. That you can meditate Definitely. easily. Your mind can become e easily calm, you know, than if, without practicing mindfulness beforehand. Yes, that is also very helpful. And um, another thing uh, that uh, you just mentioned that when we do feel calm, it's like you're suppressing all these things. Uh, but that is also sometimes I have felt when doing yoga, like, okay, I become calm but then I still have my issues. But it's later uh, looking at them through the lens of Anicca, hopefully will uproot them. That's right. So I see the, the difference quite clearly. Yeah, mindfulness can only suppress your, your cravings. Yeah. In order to get rid of your cravings, you have to use Anicca and Anatta. If you crave for uh, something and that something is impermanent, then you don't want to have it, right? If you want to get married and it's only going to be for one year, you, do you want to get married or not? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but who can guarantee that your marriage will last forever? You know? Exactly. Okay. Never. <laughs> if, if you see any child and you say, better not get married, better be alone. <laughs> yes. That is true. I realize many things I let be. That's it. Yes. Mm. So if you can see anicca or anatta, then you they will stop your cravings or your desire to have things the way you want them, because they don't they don't always turn out to be what you what you want them to be, right? 
No, true. Mm -hmm. And often um, I read one sutta which didn't make sense before, but it's making a little sense. It's like there is a much greater happiness, not that I felt it, but the promise is there. And then you think these are not that fulfilling. So I see that that difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you. You see more and more as you practice. Okay. Okay. You Thank are you. practicing mindfulness is very important. Yes. Mindfulness, then meditation, then wisdom. In that exactly. order. Yes. Okay, good. I'll Thank go to go to Vancouver and then Sweet and check. Good evening, Mr. Ajahn. Yes, good evening to you too. Good morning to you. <clears throat> good evening. Um, yeah, I don't know the Abaya Mukha, and I don't know that one, Ajahn. Mm -hmm. um, is it also five? Uh, they're oh, vices, it... vices, you know. Vices. Gambling, drinking, um, going going to sit for social pleasures, go to places for social pleasures, like going to bars and nightclubs and places like that. Oh. And being lazy also is, is considered bad because when you're lazy, you, you're not producing any income. So when you don't have income, income you might have to go steal money from other people to, to use to, to live on and the fourth the fifth one is to associate with people who like this thing people who like to drink people who like to go to bars and nightclubs people who like to gamble or with people who are lazy because when you associate with them they will tend to pull you to, to do the same thing that, that they like to do. Mm. If they like to drink, they'll, they'll, they'll ask you to come and drink with them. If they like to gamble, they'll ask you to go gamble with them. And this, these are bad practices because it's gonna drain your resources, your money. And when you don't have enough money, then you have to resort to, to stealing or cheating or lying to get more money. Mm. So this is the why we should not do this these practices because they can lead us to do to go to do to break the precept really that's what it means. Oh. But they in themselves that don't don't cost you to go to be reborn in the in the lower realm of existence yet because it's not yet bad karma. Oh. You know what I mean? If you yeah. don't go kill or steal or commit adultery or lie, then you, you don't go to the lower realm of existence. Even if you drink or gamble or go to bars and nightclub, as long yeah. as you don't hurt other people, <clears throat> you, you, won't, you won't be reborn in the lower realm of existence. But if you if you run out of money from gambling, then you go steal mon more money so that you can do more gambling. Then you are breaking the prison. Mm. <clears throat> and the more likelihood you will break the prison because when you run out of money, what you're gonna do? If you, if you still want to drink, you have to go steal money to buy more more drinks for you. Mm. If you gamble, you want to continue on doing gambling, so you might have to go steal money to so that you can have more money to gamble. <clears throat> so these are activities that we should not engage in. Okay. Is the pre... Um, yeah, pre, pre activity to, to <laughs> okay. doing bad karma. <clears throat> yes. Uh, mm. that, yeah, that's clear. Okay. No. See, see, the word of, of, of apaya means the lower realm of existence. Oh. 
and, and loka it means the entrance, entrance to the realm of the lower realms of existence, abhaya mukha. Oh. oh. Abhaya you're just standing at the entrance. You're not in there. You're not in oh. Abhaya Mukha. But it's oh. easy for you to go in because you're at the entrance already. Oh. Mm. Mm. But, but if you break the precept, you, you enter? Because it's easy, it's easy for you to break the precepts. And once you run oh. out of money and you still want to, to drink, you, want, you still want to gamble, you still want to go to bars and nightclubs. And you don't have money, what do you do? You you have to steal or cheat to mm. get money. Yeah. Mm. This is this, this activity is they are called vices, right? Vices. Oh. It's the standing at the entrance of uh, a buyer. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's clear. Uh, John, was that the same as um, the first thing that Buddha mentioned in um, Mangala Sutta, like not associate with... That's the... right, that's not associate with, with bad people. People who like to drink is considered bad for you. People who mm -hmm. like to gamble is bad for you. People who like to go to bars and nightclubs is bad for you. Because they was, they'll, they'll take you with them, right? If, when they go to bars and nightclubs, they ask you to come along. Mm -hmm. If they go to gamble, they ask you to come along. If they drink, they ask you to join them, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to lose your friend, you have to do what they ask you to do, right? Mm -hmm. And when you, when you start to do then you get into the habit of doing it yourself. <laughs> Eventually, mm -hmm. so this, this these are not good people to associate with. But mm -hmm. if you if you have to deal with them, do business with, with them, you can still do it. But just don't let them pull you to do what they 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 do that you think is not good for you to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they, ask, if they ask you to go to have a drink with them, you just have to say, I'm sorry, I'm a Buddhist. I keep the five precepts. Um, the lazy is lazy people is like lazy to work. Oh, people yeah, are... lazy don't work. So so they tend to earn money in a, in a bad way, right? If they don't work, then they, they, they find money in, by cheating or lying or stealing. Mm -hmm. Or scamming, like internet scamming. These are people who like to, to like to work. <laughs> <laughs> Their work is to is to steal money from other people. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, that makes yeah sense. Yeah. Okay. Because they're lazy to go to work. Because <laughs> work. Or people working as prostitution also. They're lazy to work so. You know, being a prostitute is easier to make money, right? Mm. But, but sometimes I think it's it's it's, it's not that sometimes they are not they are forced to some people. I well, think some not, some but some are can. doing it voluntarily. Yeah. By choice. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Oh no! I was thinking like some people they like to. Um, eat like you no know, live. Um, you know those live like seafood. seafood, and then they tend to ask you to go along. <laughs> well, it, it, it's like it's like calling you to go kill animals, see? so you don't go with them. It's, you decline the invitation. Say sorry, I don't want to participate in this activity. Like people ask you to go fishing, you say, oh, I don't want, I don't like fishing or go hunting. This is the same way you go fishing in the, in the restaurant instead. Mm -hmm. You go point at a fish and say, I want this fish on my plate, you know. Yeah. And if we go, so we also involved in like killing. 
Well, not exactly. If you just don't order yourself, if you don't, you don't order the food yourself, then you're not involved in the killing process. Killing is con killing is considered killing when you order the killing yourself or do the killing yourself. If you don't do any order, you just go with them and let them order the food, and then you just eat the food. Then you're not doing any killing. You, yeah, but I, I still don't don't like like my um my relatives. She um they ask me they they ask us to go to a live seafood restaurant um and uh, it, uh they we did we didn't go. <laughs> we really insist. Um, because I really don't want to watch the uh because it's a they it's a um, uh king king crab and they like to uh show you the crab and take picture. <laughs> it's really really for me so cruel. I really don't want to go, so I didn't go and they they got really mad <laughs> mad at us. But I I do I I think it's it's good that I it's okay that they get mad. But um yeah I. I just don't feel, even though I didn't order, but I still feel very ah, bad hard to watch, looking at the crap, taking pictures. The Buddha, <laughs> said, the Buddha said that it's better to, to lose bad friends than to lose your precepts. You know? So, you know, you can find good friends. You can find the people who are better or good. But the Buddha say, even if you can find anybody good at all, then just better to live alone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I feel that we really did the right thing. You know, it's it's um yeah, it's hard because it's not it's it's a uh, rel it's a close close relative, <laughs> but uh, still I just, <laughs> just I, I let, let them get let them get mad, but you just don't get mad at them as well. Okay. Yes. They can get mad, but we, we don't, don't get mad at them. We okay. don't react with mad. We cannot help. We cannot stop them from getting mad, but we can stop ourselves from getting mad. Mm. Yeah. Getting mad is not good either because it makes you feel bad. Mm. I I don't think we feel mad. We just feel like a little bit. Uh, because like the relative is an older, sometimes we feel that oh maybe we don't respect them <laughs> by not going, but still like but um but it's better to keep the precept. So I mm -hmm. and we still think that we did the right thing. You still respect them, but you you shouldn't do what they ask you to do. That's all. Oh. You still respect them, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then what, what makes you think you don't? Then what makes you think you don't re respect them? Because they say that oh you don't go uh, and then you don't like in in our culture if you don't go that has you, nothing to do with respect or not respect. <laughs> they they think that you are not giving them face <laughs> that's that's important to their like <laughs> it's hard for me to explain but uh, but I yeah you're right Ajahn and like, I'm, I'm still is. Yeah, it, it, they can say whatever they want to say, but I still respect and still um the same. Yeah. Yeah, we still keep the same. It's just that we just keep our preset. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. <laughs> Thank you, Tanja. Thank you, Tanja. You're welcome. Next, go to Diana from Wales. Hi, Diana. How are you? Um, good. Thank you. Um, good to be here, Tanajan. Um, I I only have a little comment, if that's all right. I yeah. really felt for the gentleman who said he tried to help the lady, and she wasn't <laughs> happy to be helped mm -hmm. because um, I've always tried to be helpful, and it doesn't always work out. <laughs> that's right. Sometimes people want to be, be left alone. They don't want to have other people to interfere with their life. Sometimes people like to complain, don't they? They don't actually want any help. <laughs> But um, yeah, that was all. I just really felt for him because I thought that was that was hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, before, um, before you do anything, you have to think, consider first whether whether this is a good action or not. Maybe yeah. it's good intention, but maybe maybe it's not not wanted. You know, whether you're yeah. wanted or not. I think 
as I get older, I try and listen. I and try and uh, listen to what people have got to say rather than trying to leap in and be mm. helpful. But it's hard when you've, and, and sometimes we want to be helpful because it's something we need to make people feel better, but they might not want it. <laughs> but in fact, you just want to feel better more than mm. you want them to feel better. Because... Mm. <laughs> mm. Yes, that's right. We actually do it for ourselves, not for mm. them. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But um, uh, good to be here. Thank you. Okay. Good to see you too. I'll go to Gary, thank Singapore. Gary. <clears throat> Uh, good evening, Tanajan. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, precepts. So uh, I recall that I have uh, actually listened to a Dharma talk in Mandarin regarding, uh, I'm not sure whether the Buddha or one of his uh, Arahan disciples who saw a man like running, running by and behind there's a chasing pack. So we, uh, whether it's the Buddha or the Ahan disciple, actually he shifted his uh, direction. And when the chasing pack asked whether you saw that man, you know, saw a man rising, running by, I think he said that uh, from my position, I, I couldn't see. So that, doesn't mean he has broken the fourth precept, right? Because his intention is to save the man. Is that really? Tanajan advice on this? Yes, the intention counts also. Intention whether you want to hurt or help. If you want to help, it's, then it's, it's not really breaking the precept. The precept is you have to have the intention to hurt and then, then actually do the action yourself. Mm. Before the precept is broken. Yeah, so so his intention is actually to avoid you know the, the man being hurt. So it's the skillful intention, it's not the intention to lie. So he don't really and, he, and in order not to lie, he has to shift his face or and not seeing seeing something and tell him I don't see anything. Yeah, that's that's like using wisdom, I suppose. Yes, but it's very important that you don't use it as an excuse to do to break the precepts. Yeah. Yes, that's that's correct. We have to be mindful of that. Be very careful with your intention. Yes, that's that's correct. Even if you have good intention but you break the precept, that is still not good. Like you see somebody suffer, so you don't want them to to suffer, so you kill them to help them end the suffering. This is break, breaking the precept. Is uh, breaking the first piece. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Thank you, Tanja. Okay. Next, Belinda from Singapore also. Good evening, Tanja. Uh, I'm listening. Okay, uh -huh. good. Yes. Go to Vince now. Vince from Singapore also. Vincent? Uh, yes. Uh... Hi, Ajahn. Um, I have a, uh, two questions. Uh, question one is knowing. Um, knowing is always present. It's only when we got derailed by thought or by other things that we got derailed, right? It's not knowing, it's always present. Well, the knowing is always there, but sometimes if there's no mindfulness, then the knowing just, just just not know, but it's still know, but it doesn't know what, know what's going on, that's all, with, with our mindfulness. So it's still happening, it's just that we are not, we are not, we are out of the knowing mode. It's, I don't know how to explain, but without yeah. mindfulness, you, you, sometimes you don't know what's going on, right? So, but you um, still know, so, but, but you don't know what's going on. All right. Uh, then um, the next uh, question that I have is uh, when um, so uh, you know when you are in knowing state, uh, uh, just that 
you don't need to face, I mean, there's two modes. Ma. One is called you face a fear. That means you take an effort to face a fear. But we are, we are in knowing mode, right? In fact, the fear just appear, anxiety just appear in your knowing field. Am I right to say that? That means you are very calm, you are very uh, stable in your knowing mode. And then the thing just appear. The, uh, just, uh, I mean, if the fear comes, it just appears in front of you. Uh, anxiety comes, in, it, it, it appears in you. And it's not that uh, you are engaged in them. Right? One, 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 one is your question. Uh, my question is that when I'm knowing, uh, if a fear comes up, it just appears like a fear in front of you, or then you just drop off by itself, right? And if an anxiety comes up, it will just appear as an anxiety thought, and then just disappear by itself. Well, things have appear and disappear, but uh, the knowing reacts and reacts to what, you, what appeared and okay. disappeared. So, and you want to train your mind not to to react. That's the that's the goal, because by reacting you can hurt yourself. So I I think I can see that. So um, then my uh the question is that uh if I just if my knowing mind is just quiet and silent, I think I can handle almost all things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're not reacting, then you can handle everything. Okay. So uh, then uh, when I visit you about a month ago, and uh, my question was like, because when I, I'm not very interested in speaking meditation anymore, it's because when I sit, uh, I have this knowing mind saying that oh, the breath does come and go, and how it moves, the whole breath. Uh. So then with this knowing mind, when you are doing a samadha, uh, uh, Samadhi meditation, it, it got very interesting, it was very boring. So that's why I'm not very, um, I don't like sitting meditation in that sense. So is that a wrong view or a wrong concept? Because I go in in a sitting meditation with a knowing mind. Well, meditation helps to make your mind calm and not reacting. See? Without meditation, even when you know things, you sometimes you cannot stop your reaction to, to things that you happen to know, come to know. Okay, so and when, I still need to do sitting meditation? Yeah, because this is the only way to stop your, the mind from reacting with defilement, see? with love, hate, fear, or delusion. Meditation can stop your reaction. You, with defilement. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if, if you don't have meditation, when you see something or when you come into come across something, you will react with defilement. Mm -hmm. With love, hate, fear, or delusion. Mm -hmm. So closing eye meditation is still important. Yes, in order to 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 protect your mind from from your delusion, from your Defilement. You need meditation. Right. Okay. Uh, you need both, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. All right. Hi, Stephanie from Oregon. Hi. Nice to see you. You're living right on the coast. <laughs> Must be very cold. It's uh, cold and rainy. Yeah. How's the wave? Big waves or so? Uh, it's, yes, it's actually, um, it's really cool right now. It's low tide, so the ocean mm -hmm. is really far out. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you can get really cool rocks and see a lot of the sea life. It's, uh, summer is pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in the winter, we have the crazy waves. Yeah. They're like mm -hmm. really big. Okay. How are you doing? Doing good. Um, yeah, I just, uh, wanted to say thank you and I'm working on my mindfulness. Um, yeah, i had been practicing for eight years and I don't think I was as mindful as I should have been and it's been a lot better these last few weeks and I feel a lot calmer. Good. That's okay. your instruction for sure. <laughs> yes. 
besides mindfulness, you should also sit and meditate as much I as do. possible. Okay. I do. I do. For an hour to two hours a day. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And then you can also reflect on impermanence and and no self. Yes. Impermanence Anicca, is... Anatta. To stop yeah. your dukkha. If you see everything as anatta, then you won't have any attachment toward to toward them. And you won't have no no dukkha or suffering. I have been noticing if it if I feel the clinging, I just calm my body and I go back to the Dhamma in it. Yeah, it's been really good. Okay. No Thank question you. today? No, just great grateful to be in your presence. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. You're Thank welcome. You. I think that's all we have for for the room now. I think next we'll go to question from email. We have a full question this evening. The first question from Rohini from the UK. When I meditate anapanasti, after some time, I felt my whole body is like boiling rice. It's hot and vibrates. It lasts about a minute or two. Is this normal during practice? Well, anything can happen when you meditate. Mostly they are, um, they are mental fabrication. So the way to deal with them is just to accept them, know them for what they are, treat them like a natural phenomenon, like lightning or thunder. They come and go, they are not under your control. Uh, the next two questions are from Samanji. The first question, in the Mangala Sutta, the Buddha emphasizes that leading a noble lay life, fulfilling one's duty and responsibilities too, is a significant blessing. Am I correct? Well, if, if, if that's what the Buddha said, and I have not. <laughs> Can you repeat the, the, the three uh, things yet? Okay. In the Mangala Sutta, the Buddha emphasizes that leading a noble lay life, fulfilling one's duty and responsibility is a significant blessing. Yes. As a person, a, a lay person, to be noble is to keep the five precepts. This is considered to be a noble. And to fulfill your responsibility, you have work to do, whatever your, whatever is your duty, you do it. Yeah. So this is this is good, good, good action. And the next question: Does it also mean that whoever wishes to lead an ethical lay life can do so, while those who wish to become enlightened can choose to do so? Well. It means that when, you, when you're still a lay person, then you have to perform your role as a lay person. And if you find that this role uh, as a lay person is not yet satisfaction, sat satisfactory for you, you might want to move to the role of being a, an ordained person, becoming a monk. Um... The last question from Facebook. Namaskar, Tanajan. In my practice, when I practice sitting meditation, suddenly my body shaking, my back become hard, something pulled my face so hard. After my body become quiet and not shaking anymore, I can see uh, colors, green and red. I just let it be. And after that, after it disappeared, my back, I'm, I'm watching my breath again. Is it correct? Yes, you should come back to your breath as, as soon as anything happens. Don't pay attention to anything that happens during your meditation because you can be distracted and won't get to your, your goal, which is calming your mind. Okay. <clears throat> well, Sulan, I haven't, yeah, I didn't pass you just now. Sulan, how are you? Ajahn, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. How what can I you? do for you? What can I do for you tonight? Oh, okay. Um, I have a question which is about 
um, you know, last week you mentioned about um, like for monks that go on Tudong, they will people like going on their journey. So like, um, how do they know that it's time to end their Tudong journey? When they when they feel that they need company, so sometimes or they need some advice from the teacher, then they come back and go 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 stay with the teacher to to learn more or to to find answer that they 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 could not yet have found from from their own practice. So you have to come come in and out from time to time. You go to practice alone. And then when you feel that you need more instruction, you come back to your teacher and ask for more instruction. Oh, okay. Because uh, I'm thinking like, um, like in the same way, like how how do we know that you know maybe it's the mind that is um having defilements and then like um lazy and versus like oh maybe the mind is like uh, it's uh maybe having ego that tells you um yeah like that is enough yeah well when you practice more and more you you know when your defilement is working or not because you can feel the dukkha arising when your defilement works oh, okay. when you feel uneasy you feel uncomfortable you feel an anxious you can be sure that this is the work of your defilement Any form of uncomfort, uh, uncomfort feeling is it, usually caused by your, your by your defilement. Mm. Mm. Okay. But sometimes when you have something that you might not be able to find an answer, then you might need the advice from your teacher who has more experience than you are to help you clear your question. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. I think that's about all the time we have for tonight or today. Thank you for your participation, your company. I hope this this meeting is helpful for you and help you advance in your practice. In the meantime, please stay safe, stay mindful, and keep on meditating. And if all goes well, I'll see, I'll see you all at the same time next week. Thank you and goodbye. Sadhu, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.